Well hey there, today I'm going to show off a bit of my Sonic Screwdriver project. Sorry about the noise if you can hear it. I am planning to start off my Sonic Screwdriver project and I have some of the parts laid out here. This will be different from the first Sonic Screwdriver I made, which uh, has a few functions here which don't actually work at the moment, very well at least. This Sonic Screwdriver, which is the Mark II, will look a lot like the one that they use in the actual show, as you can see. Something like this. It won't be exactly the same, probably not as detailed, but around the same as this design. I'm recording this because I didn't record any of the build process for my Mark I Sonic screwdriver. I decided it would be cool if I kind of documented each step I took just in case anybody was curious out there. And I don't know how much of this I'm going to record, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Alright, so uh, let's get started. Alright, I am back for, with another update. I don't know how many of these updates I'm going to be doing. I'd like to do one maybe at the end of every day, because this is a multi-day project. But I am back with another update that I want to show you. So I got done with a lot of the main soldering. I'm going to change this so I can see them. Give me a picture. Hello. <laughs> so, yes, I have done most of the soldering needed. I soldered together the frequency generating circuit. And I just wired on this little switch here, which I will show you now. Sorry it's a bit dark, uh, I think a storm's rolling in, but uh, we should be good. Hopefully you can see alright. So I'll show you real quick what it's doing. So I've got the battery over here, which you can't actually see, but it is a uh, 3.7 volt, I believe it's lithium ion battery, something like that. I'm going to plug it in over here. Over here is just where it's plugged into the power. I don't have a, this is just a temporary solution with alligator wires, but as you can see the circuit's on, hopefully you can hear that. If I flip the switch, circuit turns off. Okay, I'm going to flick it, flip it back on. And this slider, hopefully you can hear that, it's actually changing the frequency. Here, I'll turn off the fan. That's pretty cool, eh? And I can turn it back off with the flip flip of this. And it's off. And uh, this, this potentiometer right here, coupled with the sliding potentiometer, controls the frequency. So I'll flip it back on. I can turn this. As you can see, frequency is way lower. Hopefully you can hear that. That'll be the uh, frequency generator because in the show, at least how I'm very, very confident in how it works, is the doctor takes his sonic screwdriver, and when he when he when he takes the little button here and he pushes it up, the frequency gets higher. That's I believe how it works. So I could be pointing at something and I push this, and it would uh, make the frequency go higher. I think that's really cool. That's what I really want to do on this model. The sound just gets louder, which I guess is supposed to represent the frequency getting higher. Because uh, making the frequency go higher on that would not be the easiest thing in the world. So, yeah, that's that. One thing I'm concerned about is that I don't know if I'll be able to have the top emitter part extend with the slider because of how the sliding potentiometer is built. But if I don't do that, I'll just explain it later. Um, should be fine. 
wow, I'm really dark in this. Hopefully you can see alright, that's my next update, and I will keep you updated on the next part. It's going pretty good so far. Sorry for the noise in the background, I got my AC on, but I wanted to give you an update. Turns out my soldering iron decided to die on me. The indicator light still turns on, but uh, as you can see, I can touch it right up here, and uh, it's not heating up at all. So, I cannot solder anymore, at least not with that. What I have been doing though, is I've actually been using this lighter, right here, it's not actually turning on properly, there we go. I've been using this guy to solder <laughs> instead of my soldering iron. I do not recommend doing this because it's not nearly as precise and it's more dangerous, but I really don't have any other option besides waiting for another week in order to well, Amazon to ship one or something. So I have really no choice but to use this lighter. And it actually hasn't been too terribly. Um, it usually takes quite a few tries in order to get it right, but eventually the soldering job isn't too bad. They, they're not the, the greatest, but it should hold together, hopefully. So, here we go. <laughs> All right, so I decided before I put it all together, I figured I would just show you the wiring just, just for you people who are into electronics. So if I zoom into this mess over here, that all of this is the electronics of a sonic screwdriver. I'll try to explain it to it to the best of my ability right now. We've got the battery pack, which uses a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. I believe it's lithium ion, don't quote me on that. I'm not too knowledgeable on that subject, I'll admit. but. We have the battery here, and then the two leads coming off the battery go through here and into um, this, the switch, which I can switch on or off, okay? Uh, that switch controls whether the UV LED plus static electricity uh, detector will go off or the frequency generator uh, will go off. If I switch it to frequency generating mode, you can hear the speaker go on, and the potentiometer here controls the frequency, along with this potentiometer. Okay, I'll turn it off now. That is going to go inside here, which is the main body. Now, before I actually show you the main body off completely, I want to give you a quick disclaimer. This is not going to be, like the best looking science screwdriver ever. It's not even gonna look that great. However, it will look a heck of a lot better than this, which is just a remote, uh, which is just basically a remote with a bunch of electrical tape on it and wires hanging out. This will be this will be quite better than that, but it won't be as cool looking as this necessarily. Because I don't have the, the tools to cut out the metal like at that level of precision, and I don't actually have the metal to begin with. So, even though this is really cool looking, I won't be able to necessarily get to that level. But it will look better than the previous design, and that's the main point. To step up the, each screwdriver, a step up from the last screwdriver, if that makes sense. So, here it is. It's not done yet, I still have to paint the main body and add a few details here and there. The holes don't necessarily line up like the like 10 sign screwdriver does, but I figured that would actually be kind of cool. So these two holes are high, actually higher than these two holes. This is for a little bit of extra effect. And this part does come out. And there's a clear tube there. You can put it back and flick it around quite easily. I, I like the feel and the shape of it. It's easy to, to kind of throw it up and down and catch it. I thought that was a cool effect. And as you can see, I have this cut out right here, which I'll actually have to widen a little bit for the sliders to go up through. But yep, there you go. That's what it looks like so far. I did cut out a little ring here that I don't know if I'll add or not. It would go here and it would go like this. So you'd actually have two rings here and this would slide up and preferably, preferably that would stay down there while that slides up. But that adds a little bit more uh, length to it and I'd like it to be as small as I can possibly get it. Because that's another th bad thing about this design is that it doesn't fit easily in your pocket. It's too bulky and large. This will be able to fit my pocket way easier. Probably not as easy as this again, but uh, as you can see, they're, they're pretty similar in size. 
All right, I'm now going to attempt to put the electronics in without damaging them, and uh, I will give you an update when I have hopefully done that. Actually, I don't know. I should probably paint this first now that I think about it, so never mind. But I will attempt to put the electronics in the tube. So, here goes nothing. All right, and I'll have an update for you all. This is what I've got. So this is a working model of the Sonic screwdriver. And I think it doesn't look half bad. I still need to do detail work. This isn't going to be the final look of it, but it's the main shell, basically. So my plan is I'll do something similar to what Iron Man did. So the Mark, the Mark I was the remote and uh, electrical tape and wire sticking out. It, it was a very crude design, but it was very, very functional, right? This might not have as many bells and whistles, but it looks a heck of a lot better, and it's more sleek, and it's more user-friendly, basically. All right, so I will show you what it's got so far. So here is a switch. Turn on the frequency. You push it up for the frequency generator. like so and then this sliding potentiometer controls the frequency isn't that cool so that is that and you put it back in the middle oh wait no I should probably show you this too this potentiometer here you can use this to dramatically decrease or increase the frequency but the potentiometer is just for uh, precision, basically. Okay. Turn it off by sliding it to the middle. Slide it back. It should activate the um, UV LED and static electricity sensor. Which uh, is a bit of a pain to get working, but there you go. There it is. You can shine on stuff, although it kind of... I think well, I don't. My soldering iron isn't working, so the solder job isn't that isn't very uh, intact, and so it kind of you kind of have to play around with it in order to get it to shine properly. Either that or the uh, static electricity sensor is actually working decently right now. So there you go, and that's that. And you may be one, and you may be thinking, well, that's not very many functions, but it's not necessarily that. See. You can do a decent amount with a frequency generator, and you can do a decent amount with a UV light and static electricity sensor. For instance, just because it senses static electricity doesn't necessarily mean it can detect one thing. See, you could, you could detect things like somebody moving a blanket off of another blanket. You could detect somebody walking through a, carp, a, car, a hallway with a carpet on it. You could detect someone brushing their hair. And the UV light can do a bunch of things. For instance, UV light which you probably already know, can do things like grow plants. UV light can also detect uh, hidden ink. It can detect things like blood. Um, and it can also actually kill bacteria. So really, this thing is jam-packed with a bunch of cool functions and gizmos that you could use uh, every day. Uh, and that's really the point of this. It's a, it's, a, it's a decently small device, but the function you can do with it uh, if you're creative could be very very cool and that's why I think this is great uh, One more thing. I guess I could show you this part does slide out kind of like the 10th doctor You have the clear tube here with wires uh, Underneath it doesn't really serve a function right now, but maybe I'll make it sort of function later I like the idea of being able to like slide it out and look at your readings and then close it back up after you scan something I think that'd be cool. So maybe if I manage to I might add more sensors but I kind of doubt I'll be able to because uh, this thing is jam-packed full of uh, wires and circuits. So, there you go. So, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a good paint job and try to do detail work. It's really hard to, to detail this thing, but if I can do it, I'm definitely going to try all I can just to make it look better. Because right now, it's just a tube, really. And I don't think it looks half bad, but it could definitely use some work. So, that'll be good. And I will let you know once I've done that.